Hey guys, Craig R here, doing a little winter equipment shakedown hike this afternoon, getting ready for the winter season coming up. And I decided to come out here and bring along some of my compasses. I'm a bit of a compass nerd, as you've heard me talk in my other videos. And I was going to go over today a little bit about uh, the different types that are out there. This is a basic button compass, which I'll talk about here momentarily. This is a basic base plate type compass, useful for orienteering and basic navigation with a map. This is a special type of compass called a prismatic sighting compass. These are mirror sighting compasses. And finally, we're going to talk about the U.S. military style lensatic sighting compass. So stay tuned. I'll go over a little bit about the pluses and minuses of each one of these. Okay, first up is this little uh, hang tag compass, basically, or a button compass sometimes called. Um, this compass is really not for primary navigation. This might be something I might uh, have in my jacket pull if I just want to get a quick reference. It's liquid filled, has a little temperature readout here. This is more for informational uses. Um, maybe something to keep along as a backup to your main compass, but probably not something I'd use for primary navigation. Next up here is a base plate compass. This is a Sunto M3 compass. I've owned this compass, boy, for a, a long time, uh, probably over 15 years at this point. This is kind of a primary compass for me often to carry. It's very simple, has a simple base plate that sits on the map here, some rubber feet so it doesn't slide. The bezel here turns nicely. It also is liquid filled compass, meaning that the needle inside of here is dampened. Uh, with a liquid, usually an oil or some type of alcohol so it doesn't freeze up. Uh, the plus of this compass is it's very simple. Uh, the minus on this particular compass is over time, or if you get a poor quality compass, it can sometimes develop a bubble in here. And this compass I'm actually going to be retiring because if I get the higher elevations, it will actually develop a bubble. And elevation and cold temperatures are usually the two things that could cause a bubble to develop. The third one is physical damage of the compass, so some type of crack has occurred in here. Another nice thing with a base plate compass that you might want to look for is what they call a declination setting. And I'll try to show this here on the back. You can see on the back, on the underside here, there's a little scale. And depending where you live on the planet, the North Pole is not exactly north. In my particular area here, the North Pole is actually 20 degrees east of where I am, which is a tremendous amount of error if you had to navigate with this compass. So what this does is there's a little screw here, and there's a tool you can use to set the declination in this. So when you box the needle in the north, as I'm doing right now, it actually will be pointed 20 degrees east for you automatically, so the adjustments are already done on the map. Some people like doing it, some people don't. I'm kind of on the fence. Um, if you keep the mat, the um, map aligned with magnetic north, you can usually do your settings okay and not have to worry too much about the declination. But sometimes you're not able to do it, so declination adjustment is sometimes needed for those purposes as well. But it is a good feature to have in a compass just in case you do need it. It only costs a few bucks more to get a compass with it, so I recommend you do that. All right, this is a Brunton 54LU prismatic sighting compass. Now, the difference between this and the mirror type sighting compasses is it actually has a prism built into it, which you can see here. There's a prism under here, the mirror. And on this side, there's a little lens you look through. And I don't know if you could see, you could see in there right now, do you see those numbers going by? What you do is you sight down the compass this direction, looking through the mirror, looking through the uh, lens here at your target, and then you can go ahead and get a reading on the bearing. Uh, this compass is very nice because it does provide a very quick way to get a bearing. Although I have noticed that if your eye is not aligned perfectly well with this lens and you move it back and forth, there is parallax in here. So actually, I don't know if I could simulate it, but um, the bearing will actually move around a few degrees left or right so I'm kind of lukewarm in it. Some people really really like this compass and I get it for the simplicity. I'm not quite sure on the accuracy versus some of the other ones if it's really improving things all that much. Um, this is an interesting compass but I think that Brunton has actually stopped making it which is unfortunate because it has a lot of really good things going for it. Um, it does not have declination like the base plate compass has but that prismatic sighting feature is really useful for a lot of people especially if you want to take a bunch of quick bearings very very fast and have a good degree of accuracy. So this is the Brunton 54LU, just a different type of sighting compass. Okay, um, this is the U.S. version 
of the Silver Ranger. And I say the US version because the company Silva is actually based in Sweden. But years ago, they lost access to the name Silva for the US. So the compasses sold under the Silva name in the US are actually made by Johnson Control. They are very, very poor quality. And this compass is no exception. This is supposedly the top of line Ranger compass. Uh, the needle is very cheap. The housing here doesn't turn well. You can see it's already developed a bubble. This compass is almost brand new and it's already got a bubble in it just from this elevation. And uh, my elevation here, I'm about 4,500 feet. So this is completely unacceptable. Um, the compass, I when I put it in a freezer to see how it do in cold conditions, it actually uh, iced up. <laughs> the needle froze up and it didn't work correctly. Um, this compass is all around bad news. It does have the declination feature in here, but this declination ring, the gears in it have actually stripped out so it will move on its own. Um, and that's not a good thing if you're relying on this compass to hold an accurate setting for your declination. Another thing too is this mirror case here doesn't move very well so it's hard to adjust. Overall, a very, very poor quality compass. Uh, don't buy this compass. Don't waste your money. If you want to buy what was the original Silver Ranger. It's now sold under the name of Brunton here in the United States. Don't buy the Silver products if you live in the United States. They all are very, very uh, poor quality in general. All right, in terms of mirror sighting compasses, I feel that this compass here, the Sunto MC2G, is the top of the line, the best that you can actually get. This compass is made in Finland uh, by Sunto. It's an excellent compass. It has what they call the global needle. The global needle is a special needle here that is balanced and able to work anywhere on the planet. And a lot of people may not know this, but depending on where you are, the location of the pole may make the needle and the compass become unbalanced. So for instance, this compass here, this is the base plate compass I carried for years. I took this hiking uh, down in New Zealand, and when I pulled it out, the needle was actually pointing down so low, it was trying to point through the center of the planet that it basically stuck and was completely worthless. This compass won't have that problem. It can work anywhere. Not only that, but the luminous points on here are excellent if you're working in dim light conditions. The bezel here turns very nicely. It also has built in here, if you can see this, uh, this needle here, you see how that's moving? That's a built-in inclinometer. And what that means is I could take the measure of a slope. So for instance, if I was hiking in avalanche country, I can sight down this, get a measure for the angle of my slope. And if the slope is in the danger zone for an avalanche, I can avoid it or at least take proper precautions. Uh, here, the cover on here moves very nicely. Uh, the thing with these mirror sighting compasses is just to angle the mirror down like this and you can look through here on this peephole to get a sighting on it. Um, you still kind of need two hands. It's a bit of a uh, more difficult thing to do and frankly, truth be told, I rarely ever uh, use the mirror on here. They do apparently make a global needle version of the M3, which is probably what I'm going to replace uh, this one with because I'm retiring this one because it develops bubbles sometimes at altitude. But if you want a mirror sighting compass, I feel that the MC2G from Sunto is definitely the best one I've ever used um, in this mirror sighting category. This is the mil-spec USGI issued Kamenga Lensatic Compass. And by, when I say Kamenga, that's actually the name of the company that makes it. You could find it at Kamenga.com or on Amazon. There are a whole bunch of cheap Chinese knockoffs of this compass. Uh, don't waste your money on them. They really aren't worth it and they're gonna let you down. Uh, the one thing that's different about this compass and the other ones is that the capsule here is actually not liquid filled. It's suspended on a jeweled bearing. The capsule itself locks up when this uh, sighting lens is placed down on it so it can't be damaged due to movement. The other thing that's unique about it is you can get two versions of it. This version has tritium illuminated dial points. That means basically that these points will glow in the dark for um, anywhere from 10 to almost 20 years to the half-life of the tritium gas contained in this uh, capsule itself. So if you're in an area where you're working a lot of dim light conditions, this compass here will not need to be charged up with a flashlight before use. The compass itself is very, very easy to use. You basically are using this uh, lens down here to sight down on the dial points. You could probably see in there. You can actually read the bearings from it. But the way I use it is I fold the compass down on this triangle position here. There's a slot here at the top, which you can now see there in the video. You're looking through there, and that lets you see through here. And while at the same time you're looking through here, you glance down at that dial, and you can see on there 
the various uh, marker points can be read so that way you can look through and see the target you want to shoot and get the reading for the bearing on it at the same time. The compass itself is very rugged. Um, unfortunately, it's very heavy, 5.5 uh, ounces. So this isn't something I would carry if I wanted something to do very lightweight. However, it's never really going to let you down. The benefit of not having any liquid in here is that it's always going to work in all altitude and temperature conditions, whereas this cheap uh, Silver Ranger that I picked up here, you can see this bubble is starting to form. As they get higher in elevation, I'm only at 4,500 feet, this bubble is going to get worse and worse. And it's actually going to interfere with the needle. Um, you can see here it's moving around here, it's hitting the needle, and that could cause all sorts of problems. I also did put this in the freezer to simulate what would happen in freezing conditions, and the needle actually did lock up. And this is a cheaper compass. But even some of your better compasses can develop problems. This is a compass I've carried for a number of years, as I discussed earlier. Under certain conditions, it will develop a large bubble in it, so I'm going to have to retire. It. But that's one thing that this compass isn't going to want to do. Now the weakness of this compass is it does not have a declination scale in it. And the declination scale I showed you earlier is basically this scale that's built on the compass so you can set your declination up ahead of time so you don't have to do any uh, arithmetic in your head if you're going from map to real world or real world down, down to the map. Depending on how you use a map, it might not be a big deal for you, but it's something I bring up. The second weakness is it does not have a built-in protractor, and the protractor is this rotating bezel. This is what the Swedes invented in the first uh, compasses that, um, that they used many years ago. And having the, the protractor built in basically means you don't have to do things like carry a protractor card, which is what I actually carry with the Kamanga Compass. I have a protractor card here, which you can lay on the map. And it does the same thing as the protractor built into the other compass, but just additional piece of thing, uh, piece of gear you have to worry about. The other thing it doesn't have in it is the inclinometer, which I really like to have. So I ended up getting an inclinometer card that I could put on here. And basically now I can use this to measure a slope. It's a little bit of a kludge compared to having it built in. I mean, it's really nice just to be able to, you know, tilt the compass and watch that black needle go back and forth. But, um, you know, it gets by. Uh, with that said, though, I do like the compass. If you want the utmost in ruggedness and guaranteed it's going to work no matter what, this is probably the compass I would pick. Well, that's my compass overview. In terms of recommended compasses, I'd say any compass from Sunto I've never had any problems with. Specifically, I really like the base plate compass M3DL and the M3G Global version. For mirror sighting compass, the MC2G is also excellent. The Brunton 54LU outside the US, it's sold as a Silva 54, is an outstanding prismatic sighting compass. And if you want military ruggedness and accuracy, the Kamanga Lunzatic is the way to go. Inside the US and Canada, don't buy any Silva Compass. They're pretty much all junk and they're all going to let you down, so avoid them. Outside the US though, they're perfectly fine. Now the Protractor Compass was a major breakthrough in compass design invented by the founders of the Silva Compass Company in Sweden. On a recent tour of Scandinavia, I was in a military history museum and came across some early versions of Protractor Compasses and I'd like to share those photos with you now. Enjoy!